So I ran a poll to see what kind of tutorial I'd make first, and wow, it was close. God damn, it was a close fought race. Never saw it coming. I'm going to be doing this tutorial under the assumption that you've already seen Valve's official Source Filmmaker tutorials. If you haven't seen those, I highly recommend you check them out. Even though what they actually like. Doing it is dumb and I don't recommend it at all. It provides a fantastic overview of the program. It's really good for like understanding the clip editor, the motion editor, and the graph editor especially. As well as moving around in the interface and pretty much everything. In fact, nearly everything I'm going to be talking about in here was actually talked about in those tutorials, but like, they just did it in a weird way. Okay, so before we dive in, I think it's probably a good idea to explain what 3D animation like actually is, and how it works, how the computer figures everything out, and um, it does it through these. These are splines. Splines are effectively how you can render an animation in a 2D space. So every part of Diva here, say if I just grab the palettes, um, every part has a uh, position and rotation value. There are three values for each of those. There's the X direction, there's the Y direction, Z direction. And it goes for the same in rotation as well. So each of these values is sort of they're pretty much how everything's made up, and it's how the computer determines how an object sits in 3D space, and that's that's pretty much how it works. And um, you'll notice that as I change a thing, like I'm changing the X direction now, notice how the position X is changing in the graph editor. And um, this is the same for everything, and even if I were to grab the position X directly from the graph editor and pull it up and down, that's affecting it as well. So essentially, the graph editor dictates exactly what kind of calculations are being made here in order to make things move, and it is essentially every single one of these splines here, every point there is by, you know, made by a keyframe, essentially freezes these values in place, and then when you change them, and you play them over time, things, things change. Really, 3D animation it's just it's just splines, but you can you can also do it in a very uh, uh, less complicated way. You can just go in, pull things about, and that that's um that's 3D animation. Yeah, at a very very base level, you are essentially just changing the values of things over time, and these objects, any op animated object. Um, is essentially just transitioning from point to point over time. So let's dive into some exercises now, and let's see what we can do. Everyone's favorite example of the graph editor in action is called the bouncing ball exercise. It's where you take a ball and you make it bounce for a bit, and then it comes to ball. Now, this is the first exercise that any animator does, so if you do this, you're an animator now, and there's no going back. So, with the ball selected, you make an M key, I mean, you, you make a keyframe by pressing the M key, and um, what you've done now is you have frozen all of the graph out of the values in place. And now, if you were to move forward a couple bits, and then move down, you'll see that you've essentially just created an animation. You've um, created two values here, and it will go from one to the other over time. So, yeah. That's, that's animation. Alright, let's punch in the rest of this. This to come up, and as it comes up, it's losing force for every bounce it does. So, you want the bounce to gradually become less and less and less as you go throughout. Just really quickly punching this in. No real regard to what's later. Yeah. Alright, let's take a look! Yep! It sucks! Okay, but why does it suck? Well, the start is because of the way that the graph is sort of laid out. We're getting these curves in here that we really don't want. And, um... Graph editor, you'll be able to see this in motion. So, which direction are we dealing with? We're dealing with... Let's see. Oh, dead. Dead of this, alright. 
So, this here we don't want. And if we come here, it's because... Look at this. This is not the direction we want, and it's going for far too long. And, um... It's a good thing we can actually change those things. But currently, these tangents... These, uh, these handles here are not doing what we want them to do. And we can't necessarily change their length. Can't really mess around with that either. So if you click here and turn them into weighted tangents, those you can change pretty much everything about them. Change their length, change how they sort of interact with stuff. And you can see we're getting a nice point here. That's because the way the weighted tangents work is, uh, it's this curve. It's this curve that sort of dictates how fast it's going and how much time it has for the animation to sort of reach that point. So really, the shorter this is, the less time it's got, so it'll sort of immediately bounce to the next thing. Whereas the longer it is, it has way longer time to reach this position and it will reach a nice fall off, which is exactly what we don't want. So if we just pull this in, there you can see we got a bit of a bounce going. And if we do this to the rest of them, start to see an actual bouncing ball start to take shape. This do it, but it's worth it for explaining what tangents are all about, what um, splines are all about. So yeah, now you've got a bit more of a space here, but as you can see our timing's a bit off, especially around about here, where everything else has been really quick. And here's the, here's the next best thing about 3D animation. All these keyframes you just made, you can just change the timing. Just change the timing whenever. You can just drag, change. Suddenly, as you've noticed, this is updated as well. But that's sort of place, so we'll put... That's, that's good. Yeah. We've got much more of a much more control over what we're doing. We're not sort of stuck into something like in in 2D you are mostly just kind of bound by the amount of drawings you have but we don't have to worry about that. We can just manipulate it whenever, wherever and it'll always look good. So pull these up a bit more and um box. start to see it take shape. This is, this is really the traditional way, it's not, but like, yeah, how about that, baby? You did that. Good job. Proud of you. All right, so here's, here's how I would actually do it. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways to do this particular exercise. Um, what I showcased was the one with more heavy graph editor involvement, but if I were to actually animate this myself, I, um, I'd only rely on it for certain things. Um, so, if we make a keyframe here, then go to the, the three second mark, always good to zoom in, and another fun tip about the Source Filmmaker, it is, you can get into such a rhythm with, um, with how you can choose your timing, because you can just, like, punch in the arrow keys and it'll take you back a frame, and that, uh, okay, well, if you, if you move up and down, it'll take you to the end of the shot, which is not what we want, because that's, like, 60 seconds from now. So, if... I would probably pull it over to here, which is where I want the rest point to be. So that's the very end. And now I would go maybe six or seven frames to the front there, and I would pull this man's down. Maybe a bit more. Maybe let's give it eight or nine. There we go. Now you can see we're already coming across an issue here, and um, this is where we'll get into another another fun part of the graph editor these these here these are tangents they effectively control how the um, how the splines sit and how they operate and what we're going to do here is this is a quick thing just hit two and that makes it completely straight so this is how these things work um, there's four main ones we're going to be using um, there's uh, linear which is this one, 
there's flat, which is this one, there's spline, which is this one, and blocking, which is that one. And so I'm going to just actually change that to one for now. It's a bit of a demonstration. So linear means that an object is going to travel from one spline to another in a perfectly straight line. And if you were to break this up even more, um, and we make those one, it does that. So what, what you can see in the graph of here is this perfectly straight line. There are no curves whatsoever. Curves are banned. Curves are gone forever. And um, you only want to use these very situationally because it can look extremely janky. So I will be using these for the bounce at the end. The other part of these is um, flat tangents, which you can do by clicking there or pressing 2. And flat tangents essentially mean that everything is going to come to a nice gradual stop in the movement, which is absolutely fantastic for like slow in and slow out stuff whenever you want an object to um, end on a nice thing. So if I come to the end of this here and then go to this position and then press 2, you can see that comes to a nice gradual stop, which is absolutely perfect for what we want it for the end of that. Uh, it's genuinely pretty horrible for this because, yeah, it sort of slows in and if I pull this apart you'll be able to see that even more. It just sort of comes to a stop and then falls and comes to a stop and then uh, we don't want that. It looks uh, kind of shocking. So we want to use those for slow outs and slow ins only. And we want an object to start moving and then stop moving. Don't use them in between. Just, yeah. And the main one we're going to be using is the spline tangents. Uh, spline tangents are fantastic. They are what we are mostly... <laughs> I've already said that, but yeah. Um, they create a nice curve that you can pretty easily manipulate. And um, if we apply what we did before, you can do all the basic tricks. What we did in the earlier, what we did in the earlier ball bounce was um, just using spline tangents. But yeah, you can you can do a lot with them. They're very malleable. They're like the main tangent we're going to be that you're going to get to experience. And the fourth, fourth is pretty much essential for one really popular way of working in 3D animation, and that's the step tangents. Step tangents make sure that um, there is no movement between frames, and um, when you activate stepped, everything suddenly just snaps to the next keyframe like that. Look, the, re the reason this is popular is because of a, um, a workflow called pose to pose, where you you don't sort of go like straight ahead like I was doing. You would sort of do something like this. So that would come down, it would snap to there, and then we would lift up here, and you can see that it's just snapping from pose to pose, which means it's a lot easier to control and a lot easier to see what the final outcome will be. So yeah, if I were to make that all. That's a ball bounce. If I were to actually put this in splines, you can see it's it's not a great ball bounce, but it's it's there. Um, pose to pose is fantastic for because um, it's very much the way that you do a two D animation workflow in three D. Because you're just doing basic keyframes, basic drawings in between things, and then later when you spline them out, you're pretty much just adding the in betweens, which is the reason why it's pretty much the only one that's used in the um, in the animation industry. It's fantastic for teamwork, and it's way less unpredictable than straight ahead. So those those are your four those are your four basic food groups, really. You're just going to be using those. So if I were to apply these into a thing, I'd probably pull that back to there, so I get a sharper thing there, and then put you there. So yeah, so we've got. So, so here's how I would apply them. I would start off with a linear keyframe. I'd keep this as blind. I'd turn this one, I mean, sorry, start off, this is a flat, sorry, so it's two. And then I'd change this one into a linear, which is one. 
which gives us a nice sharp bounce upwards. And I'd probably pull this one back so it fits the arc a bit better. Maybe a bit further back. There. And now I'd keep this one as three. And now when this one comes down, I'll turn this into a linear again. And that's effectively how I would do it. Is I'd come along here, I'd just have this original track that I've sort of made here, and I'd use that as my distance, so that it, the distance is always consistent. Pull that up there, and up to that there-ish. Or maybe a bit lower, because I do want it to be losing momentum with each bounce. Yeah, like that. And then just pulling it down again, making this linear. Yeah. So you can make something pretty quickly. Without too much tweaking of stuff in the graph editor. I have this bounce be pretty low and I'd probably take you up to about here. Yeah. Because you can also go in between keyframes and um, pull them up and it will automatically adjust the curve, it will automatically adjust everything just for that. So say I wanted to pull this out a bit, I would just go to the keyframe and pull it out, or maybe I wanted this to be like really fast. So I'd go here and let's say I just want to add a bit more of a side motion through there. So you can just go in, make keyframes, don't be afraid of making too many keyframes, but you should avoid making every frame a keyframe because that's a genuinely horrible idea. Yeah. I mean, that looks like total garbage, so I'll just disregard that one and that one. Just, just to make an example, you know? There we go. Yeah. Come back to this frame here, and I pull it down again. A sharp bounce towards the end here. Oh boy, we haven't been hitting the ground at all, so that's fun. Not to worry though, because it's pretty easy to just fix that up again. Yeah, I'd make that much less of a bounce. Yeah. There. Yeah. Souls Filmic is just really satisfying to move around in overall. Is, um, instead of you don't have to sort of manually sort of drag and hope you hit the right keyframe, you just like do, 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 that's the right one. It's great. I love it. Hmm. I have been doing something kind of weird though, so we might get some slight discrepancies in how fast we're moving. But that's pretty easily fixed because once again. Best part of 3D, nothing is permanent. Unless you're doing straight ahead, in which case whatever, everything is permanent, but like, it, I mean, it's pose to pose. But it's straight ahead, there are no rules. You make them. And it's great. And I just make a little baby bounce here. Just a little baby bounce. Bappy bounce. Whoa. Make sure that's hitting the ground. It's not hitting the ground. Just raised a bit. And then, yep. I'm gonna come to a stop, but also I kind of want you to keep going, so I'll pull this back and then I'll make it do a bit of a. kind of a gradual stop. So I'll turn this into. turn you into a flat. And there's a ball bounce. Let's see how it looks. Ooh. I don't like that. Um, so I'm pretty sure that's a position Y thing. It is absolutely a position Y thing. So it's always, always good to go through and just adjust stuff in the graph editor if you're not sure about it. It's always worth it to check this out. seems to be taking 
far too long to get to the top. Again, pretty easy to fix. So you just take these two and you just shorten the distance between them. Because um, a larger value change equals a faster movement. That's just that's just the way science be. Now let's take a look. Beautiful. That's not it's not too bad. You can add rotation afterwards. In all essence, this isn't actually that great. Um, it could use a lot of fine tuning, but you know, for um, for a short like 10 minute display, not too bad. Uh, uh, fun thing about SFM is that it keys everything all the time whenever you auto key a thing. So if I just delete these, here's the fastest way to do it. and then pull you up a bunch. That is not changing a lot, so I'm going to have to pull this out a lot in order to see any change. Whoa. I'm just... Oh, okay, stuff it. I'll just do this a whole bunch. So I'll just pull you down a lot. And now let's see what happens if I do this. It's rotating and it comes to a stop. And that is honestly that's good enough. Alright. Yeah, so that's um that's the very first exercise that you have to do as an animator. So you're an animator now. Enjoy that. No one no one can ever take that away from you. Hm. Alright, so because I'm probably going to be doing this like Duolingo style and um, just like spoon feeding you bits of the essentials. Here's some of the uh, 12 principles of animation that we accidentally covered in this. Um, so if I were to go back to you, first off, slow in, slow out. Slow in, slow out is my favorite one because I use it all the time in virtually everything. When a thing starts moving, it never starts moving from a position of like having the right amount of speed. So if we snap this to linear, you'll see that it kind of looks like it's already been rolling for a bit before, not like it's actually started. And if we pull this forward, see how unnatural that looks? It doesn't, it doesn't seem right. And the same can be said if we were to turn this into a linear. Like, what, what is that? That's, it's strange. It's unusual. I don't like it. And that's because nothing ever starts moving with the with like a, an already set amount of velocity. Everything starts and ends at zero. And slow and slow out is the perfect indicator of that. Even if you try to sort of move your hand, you'll notice that it starts off moving quite slowly, and then it ramps up its speed, and then as it leaves that movement you'll notice it slows down again. That's just that's just the way things are. Um, motion and movement is a thing that's sort of like carried through. And you can especially see these in the bounces, which are fast in, like really fast in. And then they slow out at the very top and then they move back into being fast again. So pretty much slow in, slow out is one of the main ones that you absolutely gotta know because it's um, it's a lot of fun and it's a good way to make your animations immediately look a lot better. The second one we covered is arcs. Now the main reason why the bouncing ball exercise is such an important thing is because it's an arc exercise and the more you start to examine like what's going on around you you'll begin to notice that everything moves in an arc whether it's like the, uh, the subtle tilt of a head or like the swinging of an arm, nothing ever moves in a perfectly straight line, especially in reality. So applying arcs and making everything move, even if it's in like a really subtle arc, is a fantastic way of um, bringing your animation closer to reality. And it, it's helped me out a lot, and um, observation has also helped me out a lot. But yeah. 
those are essentially the basics. That's really kind of all you need to know from like a super basic standpoint. You need to know how the graph editor works, how it functions, what it actually means, how to manipulate it to get what you want. Because you can, you can manipulate everything. You can manipulate everything in 3D animation, which is why I love it so much, because nothing is, nothing is like permanent. I just, there we go. And it's usually changing one or two keyframes on a thing can dramatically alter the final piece, which I find really cool because you can just experiment with it, you can just tweak with what you've got, and see that already looks a lot better. I just changed one keyframe, I moved it back one frame. Hmm. So yeah, but like if it's if it's like that simple, why did I tell you everything you needed to know, well that's because when a lot of people start animating in Source Filmmaker they often don't really know what they're doing or they followed some kind of basic tutorial without necessarily understanding what the graph editor is and I see that problem crop up a lot. Um, in later years people figure it out and they iron it out and their stuff begins to look fantastic as they begin to realize what this spaghetti actually means. But um, until then, they go through like a period of around about a year or two where they just don't really know that much and they're just kind of feeling it out. I kind of went through that exactly. I taught myself to animate in the Source Filmmaker. Once you've, once you've kind of figured out how the graph editor works and um, how you can use it to your advantage, you can start doing really, really cool stuff with it. Like you can start putting in slow in, slow outs like almost instantly by just making a keyframe here and then dragging it back. Once you figure out how to manipulate it, you'll learn a bunch of tricks and you'll learn a bunch of stuff that'll make you way faster. And that's that's really the point of this, I guess. Uh, in the later tutorials, we'll be getting more into character animation and walk cycles and um, referencing yourself for animation, which is super important. But for now, I think it's best that we tackle the absolute basics. There's a bunch more that you should, maybe at an advanced level you should know more about. I'm not really in, oh shit, that's how you do it. Later on, we'll get into like, you know, proper stuff like fights and velocity. But for now, this, this is what you gotta know. All right. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. 